So welcome back to our second of these uh, quick panel hot takes, whatever you want to talk about, call them for the uh, from the inside on securing new ground. We've got Rob, John and Brittany with me again. So I appreciate you all joining and, and sharing your insights as thought leaders in the industry. Um, on this panel, uh, they're going to be discussing executive insights, the business of integration. And they'll have Acre there, Convergent and North American Video, where they're going to have a discussion around integrators and then they're gonna share some of their thoughts on the business trends, challenges, and opportunities for how they're navigating the pandemic and beyond. So a conversation about the impact of the pandemic now and then how they're looking at it uh, going forward. So my question to you as all thought leaders and those that work with integrators and have been in the business for a while, how do you believe the role of the integrator is changing moving forward due to the pandemic? Uh, let's go, Brittany, you go first. Um, being a piece of that integrator puzzle as um, a co-founder of a software company, I can say that the pandemic changed the, I'll call it uh, tech and sec um, industry from my perspective and what I've witnessed. And I think the biggest outcome of what we're going to see in the, in the future of the next, let's say, five years is how operationally efficient can your company actually move, right? How swiftly can you change? How swiftly can you become um, the best onboarder, for instance, or the best offboarder? Or how quickly can you um, integrate with other technologies surrounding you and your company for that, for yourself and the client, right? So I think operational efficiency just got stepped up and I think now it's a mandatory survivor die, um, natural selection of a lot of these integrators in the security industry. I love that. Uh, not where my head was at, but it makes total sense. I appreciate that. Uh, John, why don't you go? Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more with what Brittany said, and, and I, I'm gonna pull a little bit of a thought. I, I think that there's, the, there's gonna be a greater expectation of expanded understanding and knowledge of technology broader you know not not so much of like we know readers we know locks and we know this manufacturer right. and that manufacturer because they give us the greatest markup and that's why we sell them now the kind of exposing of the the value or the inferred value proposition of the integrator where it's no you really want to use this product um because it's the best as to we have a stable of technologies as i think hardware begins to be completely devalued software, API integration, the ecosystem that ties everything together is what is going to be the next frontier. And so you're going to see, and, and the people we're hearing from, <laughs> like the convergence, um, I think have actually been pretty smart in, in, in kind of proactively educating themselves on IT, AI, and some things like that, that they're trying to pull in and get ahead of. Um, the question is, are they too big to really make it make a difference quick enough? Um, and are more agile companies going to be able to sideswipe them? So, so that's my take on, on uh, what I think is the, it, and, and again, like a, a lot of things, the pandemic has just expedited what I think was already a trend um, that was hitting us. Yeah, absolutely. Phase changes were happening. They're now accelerated. Rob, what do you take? So I think John and Brittany have, have made very good points and I believe building on both of those foundationally what the integrators are going to be challenged with is to elevate their game from not just buying and reselling products to really entering the managed services game the exactly. want managed services the right. integrators haven't been able to answer that question because they haven't been able to either create it on their own or find manufacturers on a, on a wide scale that they had access to that could help them create it. And as a result, I believe it's gonna blur those lines. It's gonna blur the lines of who's the manufacturer, who's the integrator, and what solution is actually being delivered to that end user because some integrators, and I'm sure many on the panel and others, will have to, are, are looking internally to say, should we deliver a solution because it's not available in the market? Or if there is something available in the market, should we white label it and grow ourselves up as that integrator answering today's problems with val valid solutions? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and and Rob, if, if I could, if sure. I could uh, jump on that thought real quick, um, I think we could, I anticipate the integrator uh, pie is gonna be squeezed a bit and that 
manufacturers for just what you said, Rob, are going to jump on that managed service, you know, that that, that lovely RMR, right? We're going to say, hey, well, we can take a piece of that. And, and we want that for ourselves. If you look at um, adjacent industries like um, like uh, building, um, you know, services, there's like, I mean, look at HVAC companies. Um, they own the entire value chain. They service it, they build it, they maintain it, and then they replace it. So there are a few companies that, that fit into this conversation that do that too, but they do it in a in a proprietary ecosystem that becomes taboo in our industry. So it'll be interesting to see there's a there's a company that I used to work for that just spun up and became its own publicly traded company. Um, they do that on their HVAC side. We'll see how they perform on the security side because um, you could see them encroaching on that same model and, and really um, making that 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 harmonious relationship between manufacturer and integrator get a bit disrupted and and that'll be interesting yeah you can definitely see some vertical integration going on i think like the, the world's got the largest excuse um and they people can make changes now and just point to that versus before it just seemed like they were being pigs now they're being responsive to a pandemic um yeah. so it, it's they have an excuse my my belief is I believe, and it's a little bit like on yours, John, there's some overlap, but the idea of who the system integrator is is gonna change. And it's almost like a software system integrator, the introduction of what that means. So people um, that have historically been, uh, that did Salesforce and Workday and, and those system integrators of that coming into the industry. Now, I don't believe they, they, they may not turn a screwdriver, but they will drive specification and, and figure out how to, you know, they make a lot of money in the front end and a lot of money in the back end and somehow in the middle squeeze to get somebody to install it for them. Um, I, I believe so. My response to that is, I'm curious why as an industry, we always look at systems integrators as people that can integrate security products, but we never look at them as people that can integrate systems. So they integrate, you know, security and access control, access control in the video but it never kind of goes beyond that. So I think like you were saying, John, and it's, it's, it's now time for, I think our integration companies to actually look more like technology companies, like you've all said, um, versus just being system integrators. And I think that there's actually a risk there to jumping over the integrators, to be quite honest. I, mm -hmm. I, as a product company and a software product company, I can tell you that we build APIs five years ago and we're, any company right now, we don't need, you don't need an integrator. You go push a button and it's integrated to the rest of your system. So I think that if they're not careful, it might by bypass it altogether. Yeah, I think that's the blurring of the lines. Manufacturers right. become integrators and integrators become manufacturers. And it's right. certainly a great opportunity for both parties, but they both better be aggressive because the customer wants those solutions. Exactly. And it's now it's a, it's a mandate versus a need and I'll pay for it. Now it's a mandate. Absolutely. And I think, uh, I, I'm sorry. So no, just no, to no. add, there's something you said, Rob, that and, jo and John as well, that I think that is a, a really good point, I think is a next role in the security industry is a security architect. And I think that word is really heavily used in the software technology industry, especially. But I think what we're missing is the value of that inside of security, because there's a security integrator but there's also that architect that not only looks over the uh, hardware products, but also the software products and can speak to both and understands the risks and the cyber and all those kinds of things. That role is something to be built on, um, I think, in the industry itself. And those are going to be the most valuable, I think, in the next five years. A lot of opportunity. Well, this will be an example of one of the topics that's discussed at Security Ground. Please go ahead and sign up for it. I think you'd be very pleased. We look forward to seeing what Anchor, Convergent, and North American Video have. But I want to thank Rob, John, and Brittany very much for taking the time to share your insights and thoughts as thought leaders in the industry. So thank you very much for doing that. Absolutely. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you.